Your vacuum cleaner is one of the most important cleaning tools in your home. But if you ask me, there's nothing worse than when you go to use it and it's leaving a stinky odor behind or just not picking up dirt from the floor. Now, a lot of times this is caused by just the vacuum being dirty and needing a good deep clean. So let me show you a few tips of how to get this job done and keep your vacuum working great. Now to start, I like to remove the canister and all the parts that easily come off. Now this is a Hoover vacuum here, and obviously everyone's vacuum is going to be a little bit different because there is a ton of different makes and models on the market. Um, but a few things kind of just remain the same across all vacuum types. If it's a canister, this is gonna be an area you wanna deep clean. All vacuums have a filter, and this is where a lot of times the stinky odors come. Let's see if I can get this one out here and you'll notice, holy mackerel, <laughs> this one's pretty dirty, and this is really good. what's gonna be causing those stinky odors like I mentioned. So we're gonna clean this, and then I like to just pop off all the accessories as well. Now the other thing I like to remove is the hose here. So this is gonna pop off. Now this is kinda gross, and brace yourself mildly. This is the hose that has been used for a while, but let me show you a brand new one. So you can definitely tell there's a bunch of dirt and grime that's stuck in here and just take a look inside. It is, it is pretty nasty. <laughs> but again, I say this a lot, but that is going to cause an odor if it just sits there over time. And every single time you're sucking air through here, it's gonna suck it through the vacuum and it's just gonna push it out through your entire house and it's going to smell bad. So today that is what we're going to fix. So as you can see, I got all the easily removable parts that just pop off out. Now what we're gonna do is also remove the brush roll here. You can see there's some kind of fuzz and things connected to that. And I wanna give this a good deep clean. So there's usually just a few screws on the bottom here that hold this tray in place. This bottom tray just pops out completely. You can see there's quite a bit of dust in there as well. Now this here brush roll, you can see this is the belt. You just slide this side out here and the brush roll comes completely off. Now again, like I mentioned, every vacuum cleaner's configuration is gonna be a little different. For instance, this bottom wheel tray comes out here, so that's nice, you can, we can clean that up as well. And then this side in here obviously does not come out, so we're gonna have to just get all of this nice and clean in place. Now a quick pro tip, if your roller brush is full of hair or thread or whatever else is stuck around it, I like to use a seam ripper opposed to a scissors just because I'm able to kind of just get under the stuff picks it right out, cuts it, so you can easily remove it from the brush roll. So now that we removed all the parts that we want to clean from the vacuum, this is kind of the funny part when it comes to cleaning a vacuum cleaner because there's a few different ways you can do this. Now I like to start with the canister. We're gonna get all of the debris that's in there completely out. There's another filter on the top here that I'll show you as well. Not every vacuum has that, but this one does. Now. In the past, I've used a vacuum to clean my vacuum cleaner, and it kind of creates this like infinity loop of dust because if I suck all the dust out of this vacuum cleaner into another vacuum cleaner to clean this vacuum cleaner, the dust just moves to another vacuum cleaner that will have to be cleaned, most likely maybe by this vacuum cleaner, and it doesn't end. So to break that cycle of dust, what we're gonna do is bring a lot of this outside. I'm gonna brush a lot of the debris off that I can and even use a leaf blower to blast it away. So the first thing I'm gonna start with here is the canister. I'm gonna dump that down into the bucket here. You'll notice on the top, there's this filter. And then I'm just gonna take a brush Start getting rid of all of this dust. Again, I like to do this outside just because doing this inside is gonna make an absolute mess. So that way we're not getting our house dusty too while we're trying to clean our vacuum cleaner. Now quickly before we go inside, I'm just gonna clean up the cord here. And this is actually kind of an area that often gets forgotten, but it can get dirty over time. So I'm just gonna grab a all-purpose cleaner here and just spray down a microfiber towel like so. And I'm just gonna grab the cord. And then as I wrap it back up here, I'm just going to slowly but surely wipe it down, cleaning it as I go. All right, so I'm just filling up a container here with some warm water and then I got some Dawn dish soap. 
Just gonna give a quick squirt in there. And then this is what we're gonna soak all of those parts that are really dirty, that need a little time to remove any remaining dirt in here. I like to use a container this size just because some of the parts are a little oblong and weird shapes and this just fits them real nice. Now there are just a few things that I won't soak in the water here like the roller brush or this little wheel tray just because there's bearings and things in here that I don't want to soak and get wet. So I'll just wipe these down with a damp cloth. So as I wait for those parts to soak in the soapy water, I'm just gonna grab a damp cloth here, a little bit of all-purpose cleaner, even got some soapy water. I'm just gonna detail wipe down the entire machine here also gonna wipe down all those parts that I don't like to soak in the water. Now obviously you can be as detailed as you want with this. It's totally up to you. I like to kind of go the extra mile every once in a while with my vacuum cleaners just to make sure everything's nice and clean. And what I've always noticed is kind of by doing this, it just extends the life of the vacuum that much longer because that dirt and debris is not sitting in there, just slowly breaking the machine down. Obviously, it's always gonna have a level of dirt and things in it. And yes, is getting crazy <laughs> deep cleaning it. Probably a little aggressive because the next time you use it, it's just gonna be full of dirt again. Probably a little bit, but I was just always taught from a young age to maintain my tools. That way they last as long as possible. And you don't have to replace them as often, which is always great on the wallet. This vacuum is a lot dirtier than I anticipated. I knew it was dirty, but I didn't think it was this dirty. <laughs> okay, now one area that I noticed from time to time is obviously this tube here. You can't remove that. That's completely attached to the vacuum cleaner. Now, sometimes you'll see it comes out through the back here. So what I like to do, now if you don't have one of these, it's okay. You can kind of just like fish a microfiber towel through there with an old coat hanger like this. However, what I like to use is a dryer vent cleaner. So this is to kind of get into your dryer uh, lint trap area there. So this just pushes right through the hose and it's nice and bendable too. So you can see, huh, there it is. So the main machine is completely wiped down here along with those parts that I just wanted to wipe down by hand. Now let's go check on the stuff that was soaking. I have a feeling it's gonna be pretty nasty. So as you can see here, these pieces are looking much better, but the water is black. So I'm gonna pull these out here in the tub. Now, if you have like a utility sink, you can do this in there too. Fortunately, I don't have one of those. So my tub is the next best thing. The dryer cleaner here is coming in handy because you can use it for all of the attachments like the suction tube here. Ooh, that was good. <laughs> oh man. So as I mentioned, a lot of the odor can come from a dirty filter. And what we're going to do is just give this a rinse until it's completely clear. And then we're gonna let this dry. So I noticed this canister is kind of a little greasy from whatever was vacuumed up here. So I'm actually gonna use a little bit of Dawn Power Wash. So as you can see here, everything is nice and clean. We're just waiting for the pieces to dry. Now, if you've ever noticed that your vacuum has kind of a musty odor to it or kind of like a moldy smell, it could be caused by cleaning your vacuum and putting it back together too soon before everything is completely dry. And this is really an important step, especially for your filter here. Now on this specific one, it says air dry for 24 to 48 hours. So before you lock this into the machine, you wanna make sure it is 100% dry. Now a pro tip that I like to do pretty much for all my vacuums is actually have a second filter on hand. That way when I'm cleaning this one or rinsing this one out as this is drying, I still have another filter that I can pop in there. And I can just always have a clean one on hand when I need it. Again, this is gonna be the area that most of your stinky odors come from. So keeping this clean on a regular basis is key to not having a stinky vacuum.
So now that everything's nice and dry, it's time to put back together the machine. Now before you put on the beater bar, I do just like to take a quick look at the belt itself, make sure everything's in working order. If you notice a belt with any sort of like rip or tear, I would suggest replacing that before you put it back on. This one looks good, so we should be able to just fit it in here. You'll notice there's a little notch out the side there. I'm just gonna have to snake this in. So once you get the belt on the motor there, you wanna make sure that these squares fit snugly on the sides. Now every vacuum is a little bit different, obviously, in the way it's constructed. Sometimes I'll just snap a picture before I take anything apart. That way I know exactly how to put it back together. But usually it's pretty straightforward. Now for this vacuum here, there's two filters. There's this one here in the internal and then this one here that goes on the outside. My understanding is this one should not get wet. Um, you should replace this if they get really bad, but I blew this off and just kind of wiped it all down. This one doesn't look too bad on the inside here, so it should be all set. So the canister here is nice and clean, and obviously you kind of still see there's a little bit of like fogginess, haziness, and what that actually is, is once the dirt and things spin around in the canister, it starts to scratch away just at the plastic here. It's very common with canister vacs. Unfortunately, you can't really clean that away. It just kind of gets them a little foggy there. So taking a look here quickly at the clean hose. Now compared to where it started, this one looks so much better. So there you have it, this vacuum cleaned up great, but now for the moment of truth, does it still work? Thanks so much for watching this video. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. And if you have any cleaning questions, drop a comment below and I'll help you clean that up.